Hi, it's Dave, and I've had a few messages about my HV cables that I put in the previous car that I made and what I'm going to use for the Nissan Leaf conversion. Well, this is one of the ones, and it's actually zero gauge wire, or I think sometimes it's expressed as uh, one slash zero. I'm not sure if there is a difference between them. I don't think there is, to be honest. Um, but it's the, it's the specification, so it's how thick the insulation is, how thick the core is, um, and this is very very similar to what was in the Nissan Leaf originally so that's why I'm using it um, but I make my own cables so I buy the cable in uh, cut the cable and make them and I'm just going to just do a little video uh, edit together you know how I actually do that I don't normally do a lot of editing on my videos I just kind of spiel to the camera and then upload it but I can just make a cable show the steps of how I do that but um, really important point is that you use pure copper cable you can buy uh, copper coated aluminium, I think it is, it might not be aluminium, but it's CCA. Uh, it's not pure, not pure copper and you're going to suffer from a lot of losses, temperature, it may melt, they're not, they're not going to be good for the high amperage that you're going to pull in an EV car. So make sure whatever you buy is pure copper, I mean this is about £10 a metre, so it's not cheap, but it's um, going to give you the insulation you need and the ability to carry the current through the car that you need to as well. So I've got a kind of a reel of it here. There's about six meters there. Uh, I've got the, uh, the black over there as well down there. So I'm just going to put a little video together, a little bit of editing, just to show the stages I go through to make a cable. And, and I hope that helps uh, for any of your projects out there um, and what you do. Oh, another just a quick thing is the ends. Buy these off Amazon. Um, they're about a pound, pound fifty each. Um, I was hoping to have had these by now, but actually uh, bought them on Amazon, they came from the States. I'm not sure what that was all about, but uh, I've had a little bit of a delay getting these, but um, I'm now going to make a cable and uh, I'll show you how I do that. So step one, quite simply, you need to trim off the uh, insulation around the end, because if you imagine we're going to slot on a end. So the ends are hollow, that's going to slot onto the end of that. But of course it won't push right in at the moment because the insulation is in the way. I tend to very simply just measure it up, make a mark with a Stanley knife, cut around and then slot it on. Um, only top tip I can really give here is the knife you use, make sure it's a really sharp blade, nice fresh blade. This one's a brand new blade I've just put in, but it'll just cut through uh, like a hot knife through butter, as they say. Um, but nothing worse than using a dull knife, it's just you're going to sit there forever trying to use like saw. Um, you can be a bit bull bullshy with this because you're going to not really damage the copper so you can cut quite hard into it. Um, unlike if you're using a thinner wire, um, you've got to be careful that you obviously don't cut straight through and cut the wire as well. But um, I'll cut this one and I'll show you how that looks. So there you go, you can see I've just literally with a knife just gone around, carefully with your fingers and cut that insulation off. So I can just now simply pull that out, there we go, and I've got a copper copper exposed there we go and it's about the right leather to get right up to the end you don't want it so that it's kind of a whole load of copper being exposed you want the the insulation to be butted up as much as you can so all you then do there you go look at that snug as a bug so one step I've missed is you want to put on a bit of heat shrink so I've got here this is what one looks afterwards so I'm just going to cut myself a little bit of heat sink and then slot that on first and then I'm just going to use my vise to crush this copper outside which then clamps it onto the wire heat sink, uh, use the heat gun on the heat sink and uh, wrap that up so the, the heat sink wrap stuff I just buy on eBay I buy it in long strips um, again it, it, this doesn't cost anything it's like a couple of quid and uh, you can then cut it to your desired length I normally cut inch and a half couple inches it's best to have more than not enough because nothing worse again than just scrimping and then it looking a bit rubbish so just going to cut a section of that I'll thread it on my wire put my end on and then we'll go over and clamp it down okay so cut that so I now have that on the wire I have the end there that can slot in there that will slot over if I can do it all one-handed whilst holding the camera no gonna fail miserably oh yeah I can no I can't <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant Dave. Um, right, we're going to waz it over, let's clamp that down on the vise and then we can heat treat that on. Right, so as you can see I've put the end in the clamp and just tightened the clamp enough just to hold it in place. That just helps you because you need two hands. You need one to go in there like that. Push it nice and firm and then just slowly clamp the thing shut. 
This is a one ton clamp. I found that it provides plenty of uh, strength to do this. Hold on. No. And you have to do it pretty damn tight. If you don't really, really clamp it down, they will just come off. There we go. Right. Undo that. There we go. One extremely clamped on end. That's not coming out in a million years. So let's go and heat sink this on. And uh, job's done. So there you go, clamped on nicely. There's a bit of heat shrink there. I've got my heat gun. This wasn't expensive, about 15 pound on eBay. Um, just gonna turn that on and warm it up. It takes about a minute to warm up to temperature and then we'll, uh, we'll shrink this on. It's, uh, the heat shrink I use is 50%, so it should shrink 50% in size. Uh, it's not going to be able to because there's stuff in the way, but um, that'll give it a nice snug fit and uh, cover that join up for us. So I'll admit, that's a bit fiddly to do one-handed while you're trying to hold a camera, but if I show you here, I've done both ends. Now actually, I've heat shrink that on, and it's all nice and tight on there, and there's the other end. So that's one cable done. It's only taken probably about five, ten minutes to make. That's my one by six meter cables. I'll just go to the black side now, um, and I have some black heat shrink up there to use, just so it's all nice and color-coded to look pretty. So there you go. I hope that helps anybody just to realise that actually making your own cables is dead simple. Um, not a complicated thing to do. You can buy the components easily on eBay, Amazon. Actually, I'll put a couple of links below just to the stuff that I use. Um, and just make sure you buy stuff from the UK if you can, because I bought mine from America and it took like two weeks to get here. <laughs> so, uh, top tip. But if you have any questions, just ping us a message as, any, as always and I'll um, do my best to help. Catch you later.